India is a place littered with incredible ancient yet unexplained ruins. Intricate ancient carvings can be found dotting the cliff faces. Seemingly laser-cut caves hewn from enormous rocks, and perhaps the most impressive of its collection, the rock temples hewn straight from bedrock, which can be found all over the country. We recently focused our attention on one of these sites in particular, perhaps the most impressive of these ancient temples. Known as Kailash, it is a structure drenched in sculpted animals and religious idols. Many others also exist, somehow carved straight out of stone hillsides. The accuracy in which these structures were carved, the refined finish achieved, has allowed these structures to evade explanation to this day. There is, in fact, another site within India, another temple, that, just like Kailash, was somehow hewn from a solid hillside. However, what is particularly interesting regarding this temple is that it was mysteriously abandoned leaving the apparent different stages of its construction for all to see. Known as Vetuvan Coil, it is located within Kalagumalai, a panchayat town in the South Indian state of Tamil Nadu. Intriguingly, upon the structure and the carved walls which it is now framed by, is the same telltale chisel marks found at so many other sites around the world, an anomaly we have already covered in depth. However, what is particularly interesting regarding Vetivan Coil is the fact that these crude marks are also accompanied by the seemingly impossible perfect finished sculptures, which mystify all who peer at them to this day. It is a visual, chronological timeline cast in stone, possibly left by an as yet unknown people, using unexplained yet amazing artistic skills. The temple seemingly displays the methods used to carve it. The artist responsible crudely chiseled the design, presumably somehow from the mind's eye, then somehow professionally worked into the refined, astonishing art which adorns so many of these ancient Indian structures. Who built Vetuvan Coil? How did they achieve such perfection, with such hard stones, at such an early time in history? Is it, like academia would have you believe, a mere 1400 years old? Or is it a far more ancient structure, built using as yet unknown stone working techniques? used by an unknown group of artists. As research mounts surrounding such sites, the answers will inevitably be discovered. There are countless ancient sites found all over the planet that are not only far older than current academically claimed by individuals funded to come up with specifically permitted dates for their creation, selling one's integrity in favor of financial securities and an authoritative position within society, offered to them in return for their obedient deceits. Like a mule guided by a carrot, these individuals not only fear losing such reputations and handsome incomes if one were to tell the truthful story regarding said sites, but they unquestionably turn a blind eye to the many areas that I cover, which are often not only implausible to state where the work of the particular permitted re-inhabitants placed much closer to us within history. But to suggest that such ancestors were capable of said feats is simply a preposterous claim. They often knowingly and deliberately overlook such features, due to their lack of any plausible explanation for such accomplishments. As such, with many ancient sites simply ignored or are disguised as closed book cases, with a dull, deliberately disinteresting tale of origin. These academics have some of the most intimate access to these ruins, yet deny the world's population a true account of said relics. For to suggest that a civilization less advanced than us accomplished the placement of megaliths far into the thousands of tons precisely atop one another with awe-inspiring stonework details and polygonal brickwork seemingly created like a puzzle of unique pieces 
among many other baffling features, I feel is a proof of a deliberate agenda-driven conspiracy concealing said site's true origins. These unexplainable anomalies, the main reason why said individuals perceive me as a threat, not only to their funding, but also their positions of trusted authority within modern society. For the truths I tell, due to the inexplicable nature of their existence and their lack of exposure within academic studies, expose the field as a funded organized group of deceivers. These features are simply impossible for them to explain, yet they continue to claim that they were built by people who were undeniably incapable of such feats. This is why many unexplainable artifacts simply vanish, and why many ancient sites are not only brushed under the proverbial carpet, but said features overlooked, ignored, and not mentioned at all. And our next relic is no exception. Many people have heard of the Great Wall of China, one of the only ancient ruins which is so large it can be seen from space, a very famous wall. Yet an even greater number of people are unaware of another great wall which can be found within India. Successfully overlooked by modern historians and antiquarians alike, this wall, known as the Kumpalgar, has been claimed to be merely a recently created ruin. Yet I feel, just like the many other ancient ruins found around the globe, is far older than currently claimed. It is of an astonishing size and a number of alternative so-called fringe researchers, which academics like to derogatorily call them, have found substantial evidence that not only is the upper layers far older than claimed, but the entire wall sits upon a foundation immensely older than the wall we see today. A foundation that many have concluded is so old that it had simply turned to dust through the eons, rebuilt at a currently unknown time within antiquity. The wall stretches an astonishing 22 miles, and once protected hundreds of extremely ancient dwellings, and measured at over 40 feet thick, to suggest that such a feat could have been accomplished by our more recent ancestors, who the founders of mainstream academia permits, is a tough posit to agree with. For if such claim were true, why is the wall seemingly ignored by modern history? I feel. The reason the wall has been successfully kept largely unknown is due to the fact that if openly studied and widely known of, more people would research such site, eventually realizing, like many before them, that the wall is far older than currently claimed and possesses such enormous amounts of stone, along with an immensely older foundation, that current claims of its origins and age are simply incorrect and a clear attempt to shrug off this astonishing structure as a reasonably modern creation which they hope will not be looked at closely. An attempt to close the book on a possible antediluvian ruin, which many people as a result told with a dull deceptive history for its existence, which not only stifles one's interest regarding the wall's origin, but deters the curious from ever investigating the wall's truly astonishing nature. A motivation which I feel is the main driving force behind its lack of public exposure. Who rebuilt the Great Wall of India? How old is its far older, highly eroded foundation? The Great Wall of India was an astonishing feat of ancient engineering, a feat that academia would prefer stay largely unknown, a reality which I find highly compelling. If you enjoy our content, if you think our battle worthy, please help us to continue our voyage of discovery in unraveling the mysteries of history. Links to donate can be found within the description. Without you, we cannot survive. Thank you. There are many intriguing ancient ruins still to be explored, still in existence dotting our planet, many of which are yet to be fully explained. Enigmatic stone carvings and often tool marks left upon quarried or cracked or broken stones, each indicative of lost technology and thus a lost civilization. We have in the past covered a number of these ancient anomalies, the Plain of Jars located in Laos being but one of these extraordinary sites. Enormous stone jars that would simply be illogical to create in the modern era, 
yet would have been even more illogical for our well-studied yet far less capable ancient ancestors to have created them. Why these mysterious sculptures were created, and possibly most important of all, when they were made, is an enigma still left within our past. And the Kachari ruins are of no exception. A set of stone ruins located in Dimapur, Nagaland, northeast India. According to academia, their history dates back to the 10th century, when they apparently appeared during what is now known as the Kachari civilization. According to this hypothesis, they were created by the Kachuri Kingdom, which ruled the area before the Anam invasion during the 13th century AD. They are a series of mushroom dome pillars, which, just like that of the ancient jars of Laos, their original purpose remains a complete mystery. And although of considerable size and weight, are still considered to have once been a part of a game similar to that of chess Yet any explanation of how these enormous statues were moved remains conveniently unexplained. As expected, due to their inexplicable nature, the site has been largely overlooked by funded academia. It seems that the fact that these remnants are clearly indicative of a civilization of tremendous capabilities, including the refined finish of the sculptures, has meant that academics simply avoid discussing or exploring the site in its entirety. Not only is the site neglected by academic study, but the vast majority of these ancient artifacts have unfortunately crumbled during their long life, which has led many alternative researchers to volley against the Indian government, demanding that more be done to protect the site and to subsequently avoid the ancient site from suffering even more erosion or of unfortunate vandalism. Who created the Kachari ruins? When were they created? What was its original purpose? It seems, regardless of these questions being of great historical importance, what is apparently more precious to funded individuals and the institutions in which their conformity to existing, yet highly disputed chronologies of man subsequently prop up their selected fields of apparent study and are more than willing to aid in the continuation of fallacies, if that means the continued survival of their field of choice. It would appear that these ancient stoneworks, each of an enormous size, are all ancient uparts, whose sheer existence is enough of a deterrent for academia to even mention the existence of, let alone publish any explanatory studies of the ruins, absent any published journals. Away from academic ignorance, however, the local population inevitably has their own supposed surviving story regarding the creation and origins of the stones, which now forms a nice amalgam of Indian mythology, as per this mythology. Bahim and Hadimba got married at the site in antiquity, later giving birth to Gadoka at the site. And according to this local folklore, it's said that Bahim and his child used to play chess here with these pieces, and although clearly of mythology, it is better to attribute the ruins and to attempt an explanation in regards to a creator of tremendous capabilities, we feel. Better this than what we currently experience. Complete ignorance of this precious yet highly delicate, still surviving ancient ruins. It is a place which we find highly compelling.